But anyone, anyone who's got that ability, they can, they can do, do so. Do you know how it's verified if they have the ability? Is it yeah. just anybody that can say the words? Or? In effect, yes. There's no set reason that the individual has to be an imam. You don't have to be an imam. If you know what you're saying, then you can, they, that can be arranged. He says, Nika, can I find these recited words on Google? No, someone needs to be able to say it. Well, no, you can. You can You can get it. But someone needs to recite it. You can't say it between yourselves, if you see what I mean. You need a witness there. Yeah, you need a couple of witnesses. So, I mean, if you're dead serious, I mean, first thing first, that, that will be the first, your first port of call. You know, you can't have a physical relationship with each other at the moment. And, um, but that's very hard because you're very young, you see, and that's very... That's, that the temptation is there. So, if you're looking to get into the faith, what, have you come from a Muslim background? Your parents Muslim? No religion. No religion at all. I was lost in life, and they gave me guidance. You know, and said, when did you do your shahada? Which is, when did, I do when did you? Yeah, yeah. Right you did here. Yeah, right Where? With who? I can't remember. It was somebody else last time. Oh, somebody else. Yeah. And how long you, did, did you go? Did you do that? I think about a year and a half. Maybe. And, a year. And what about yourself? She hasn't done it. Yet. No. My, oh, yeah. per, my oh. parents are Catholic. You're Catholic? And, um, yeah, he brought, no, he, my parents are Catholic, they're Irish. And then he brought a Quran home and every night we try to read like 10, 15 pages of wow. the Quran. Brilliant. It's like an English translator, but we read it every night and I really, I really relate to what it says. Yeah. Fantastic. You see, you see, know, yeah, yeah. You see from Catholicism, yeah. you need to understand this yourself. Yeah. If you take the leap into Islam, yeah. number one, you understand the concept of who the prophets were. Yeah. Abraham, I mean, this lady's in the way, but we've got some signs around here yeah. which show that prophets were sent by God. Jesus was one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catholics who believe that Jesus is, is a part of a trinity, yeah. but that was not the teaching of Christ in the Bible. If you're reading the Bible and the Quran regularly, like you said you have, yeah. you will notice Jesus calls or refers to himself as a prophet of God. Yeah. Did, did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Bible and in the Quran. Yeah. So where is the idea that he's got later developments in Christian history? He never went around preaching this. Yeah, we were literally just talking about that. Interesting. Said, uh, it's a hot topic, you see. Yeah. And Christianity, with due respect, and Christians in this day and age of information, they're beginning to understand, whoa, Jesus was never God. Yeah. Why are we worshipping the man for? Fantastic. That's the yeah. Islamic message. Yeah, yeah, God, yeah. God is never a man. Just imagine the, the creator of the heavens and the earth is just a bloke walking this, you know, walking around. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Could you explain what the Shahada is? Yeah. So the Shahada is a testification that you believe there's only one God, an unseen God, who is the creator of the universe. God sends messengers, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them, who came to their communities, inviting people to worship in God alone. So then you testify that the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, is God's final messenger. But that's all he was as well, a messenger, a man. We pray five times a day. What's your name? Antoine. Antoine, brilliant. So, Antoine. Uh, do you pray in front of your? Uh, do you do you pray in front of your friends sometimes? Yeah, in front of anyone. Right. You do your five daily prayers, yeah? yeah? You know what to say and everything. I, I, I say I don't. Um, whatever. It, I'm sure there's something that you're supposed to say, but I just say whatever comes to me, whatever's in my heart. Because you know, in the Quran, it says God knows what's in your heart anyway. A lot knows what's in your heart. Alhamdulillah. So but, that's excellent, but because you've been Muslim for some time, it becomes incumbent on you to learn what to say as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, like all giving praise to God Almighty, is what to say when you're bowing, when you're prostrating, yeah. what you need to say. So you have to, you have to in effect, learn that. And there are easy booklets that you can refer to, which will give you a step-by-step -step guide how to do that. But most fascinating, you young people, when you could be enjoying your life in any other way, but Allah is calling you in the sense that you're creator, because we believe every single human being has something called an inner disposition, an inclination towards God. So in this society is where we can do what we want, but we still don't find happiness. So then when we, when we reflect, then it makes more sense. I'm so pleased that you're going to that step. So becoming a Muslim is very straightforward. You testify there's only one God. The final messenger is the Prophet Muhammad, upon, 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 sorry, upon whom be peace. He's the final messenger to mankind. And how do we go about like, doing that, like testifying there's only one God? Do we do you, make, you make the testification verbally. Do we just do it within ourselves? Or like, have to have someone there to say or like, how do yeah, you If you say it, if you say it, I, I, can, I can dictate it for you. But, yeah, I can, alhamdulillah. So what we need to do, first of all, going forward now, 
you, you need to have some priorities. Number one, a commitment to each other. If you really love each other, because you can't hang about being too close to each other unless you're married. Very sanctity, the marriage of sanctity. You commit yourself to you, she, you commit yourself to to your prospective wife. She commits yourself to, to yourself, and then everything becomes legal after that. So you testify there's only one God. God sends messages. So that's what I wanted to show you. You see, and we've got stuff around here as well, which signifies this: um, who Jesus was, who the messages were. Yeah. Are you ready to become Muslim? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Allah bless you. <laughs> okay, so basically, what you're going to do then? You're going, to make a, you're going to make a citation after me. Now going forward for yourself as a lady, Islamic dress code is you've got to dress modestly. So for example, when you inshallah marry Antoine shortly, then your beauty is for him alone, not for other people to observe you. Even the Bible teaches that the woman should be covered. Uh, you, know, you know that, don't you? In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So the Quran teaches this as well. The believing women, put their outer garments over to cover themselves. It's modesty. Yeah. Every image you saw of Mary as a Catholic, yeah. how was she dressed? Head, head to toe. Yeah. What, what did the nuns do? Covered head to toe. Yeah. Precisely. So why is that a subjugation of women? No. It's a understanding that you're not just based on your looks and sexuality and your beauty is tantamount to your prospective husband. Yeah. That's it. Pardon? That's an obedience in faith. Precisely. Obedient to God's command. Yeah. So listen, become Muslim now, recite after me. I'm going to say it slowly in Arabic. Okay. So what, what, what I'd like you to do now when you go forward is consider what I've said. Um, yeah, so let's recite. I'll say Ash. Say, I'm going to recite it to you in Arabic and then you can, you can say it. He's already, he's already said it. He's already said it. He's already, he's already Muslim for, for one year. Mashallah. What's your name? Promise. Pardon? Promise. Promise. Okay. Okay, nice to meet you. Promise. What's your name? Antoine. Okay. okay. Nice so what are you going to say after me? I'm going to say in Arabic first, okay. and then I'll recite it back to English. Antoine's familiar with the words roughly, but I never... No, I'm going to say it very slowly. Okay, okay. Secondly, it's being filmed. Are you happy that it goes on YouTube? Yeah, there's no worries. Excellent. Okay. So you're going to say the following after me. So... No, no, it's just people behind you a bit tipsy. So I don't want them here. Yeah. Anyway, say this following after me. Ash, Hadu, Allah, Ila, Ha, Il Allah, Wa, Ash Hadu, Anna, Muhammadan, Rasul, Allah. I bear witness and I testify that there is only. There is only one, God worthy of worship. one God worthy of worship and I testify, and I testify that the Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad upon, whom upon whom be peace is God's final messenger, God's final messenger. and with that sister you become a Muslim Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillah Allah bless you my brother Thank you so much. Allah bless you my sister now now, mashallah, now now what comes after this is help Tips, advice. Yeah. How do you feel first of all? I feel like I'm gonna cry. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, good, you know what? You know what? This is a common reaction we get. How did you feel when you did it? Huh? The two sisters. No, 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 no. We've got we've got an organization for sisters. Do you know anyone who can do a nikah that um, vows for? Yeah, now. Anybody, anywhere. You can Any, everyone can. Are you happy to do that? Yeah. Not only have you become Muslim now, it's the very good thing. Are you are you fine with that? Yeah. Okay. Well, could you start forward? Come forward. Do you want to? Yeah. Does he have to be dressed in dresses? Is okay? Yeah. No. Pardon? Okay. You're making yourself halal. Okay, but you um, marriage in Islam. It's very important because this is a you know a human need you know like for example we need food so because the human body needs food then Allah has laid down you can eat this you can't eat this you know there's some kind of guidance this the same way in Islam I'll just I'll just explain it that the same way in Islam 
human beings, they need relationships. You know, a man needs, you know, like if, if a man has everything, if a man has money, has a nice car, a nice house, he still cannot find peace or tranquility until he finds a partner. And the same with the same with the woman. So Islam has laid down that we have relationships, but they have to be done a particular way, which is inside marriage. Okay. I, I'll explain because maybe it's all new for you. Islam recognizes that everyone has rights. The woman has rights and the man has rights. But in Islam, we recognize that men and women are, have been created different. Men have certain needs and women have certain needs. So I'll, I'll explain to you very briefly what are the responsibilities and the rights of a man and what are the responsibilities and the rights of a woman. Okay, so basically the man's, right, the man's responsibility is he is the, the protector, he is the provider and he is the teacher for his wife and his children. So say for, say for example, when the man earns money, his money has to be spent on himself and his wife and his children. Whereas the woman, if she, has, if she has her own money or her own income, that's her money. The man has no rights to it. But obviously most women, they, they, they share, they take care of things together. But it's, it's his, he has to do it. For the woman, it's her choice. Okay. And the man, he has to teach Islam and he has to encourage his wife and his children to practice. As for the woman, in Islam, generally the, the role of the woman is she is the one who takes care of the house, she's the one who takes care of the children, and she's the one who supports her husband in, in doing his, his rights. So for example, in Islam, a man and a woman, they both pray five times a day. They both fast in the month of Ramadan. They both, they perform the pilgrimage, the Hajj, once in a lifetime. But there's more which men have to do. Like you'll find that the prophets and the messengers were men. The one who leads the community is a man. The one who has to, um, has to fight for the sake of Allah, not terrorism, but fight for the sake of Allah is the man. The one who has to provide is the man. A, a woman, she can pray in her house. But the man, at every opportunity, he should pray in the masjid. So the man has more responsibilities. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that when a, sorry, it says that if a woman, she prays five times a day, she fasts in the month of Ramadan and she obeys her husband, she can enter paradise by whichever gate she likes. So there's eight gates in paradise and she chooses whichever one she enters in. Whereas the man, he has more responsibilities, okay? As for the, the woman, then as I said, she generally takes care of the house and fulfills her needs of her husband. But we, we can give you more details. As for marriage, marriage in Islam, for the marriage to take place, there's five things which need to be met. Okay, the woman has to say yes. There's no, uh, you know, shotgun wedding. The man has to say yes. There has to be two trustworthy witnesses. There has to be a, a meha, like a gift. The man has to give the woman a gift. But it's a gift which she, she chooses. Sometimes it's wealth, sometimes it's gold, sometimes... But it's, it's something which you can discuss. And then lastly, the woman, she needs a guardian. What happens is when you have um, a, a, a woman who's brought up in a Muslim household, her father is the guardian. If the father's not there, her grandfather or her uncle on her father's side. When someone embraces Islam, then the guardian is someone who's in the... Even in a Muslim country, it would be the leader of the country or the, a judge in the area. But in this society, usually it's a, a Muslim who is known and trustworthy and accepted in the community. So we'll have to find you a guardian. Are you happy that we find you a guardian? And that, that guardian, basically, he is... He is the one who, who decides that this person is, is good for you, he's a trustworthy person, and at the same time, when you have any difficulties or problems, you can turn to them and they can come and sort the man out in a good way. Let me just, give me one moment and I'll, I'll uh, where, where's Hamza? Okay.
We we need a, a wali. Okay, one second. I'm coming. Yeah? Uh, he's just he's just coming. Do you have any questions or? Yeah, I did actually. You know, you said about the eight gates of heaven. Yeah. What, what are they? Like what? Basically, uh, in Islam, there's six pillars of Iman, six things which we believe in, as, as taught by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and as comes in Quran. We believe in Allah, we believe in one God, that He alone deserves to be worshipped. We believe in Him by His name, His perfect names and His attributes. And we believe that He alone is the Lord, the giver of life, the giver of death, and we worship Him alone. That's the first pillar. Second pillar, we believe in angels. Angels are from the unseen, they're made of light, and they fulfill the commandments of God. They can never disobey God. Yeah, I remember in the Quran, it says the dead are, um, I think it's like the dead are not dead, but what is it, the dead are alive, but we perceive them not? Yes, 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 yes. I really like that one, that's one that we repeat a lot. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. so, oh, so you, you've looked into it, yeah. Yeah, we do read the Quran, we try like, we're nearly like, not, well, we have a book of but we try reading like every day, like at least. Yeah. MashaAllah, that's yeah. very good. Alhamdulillah. May, may Allah increase us all in uh, knowledge, beneficial knowledge. So, yeah, so the angels... Yeah, all of us, all of us. So, so the angels, they're made of light. Like, for example, in Islam, we don't believe the devil is a fallen angel because the angels can never disobey God. We believe from the jinn, which I mentioned before, the jinn, they're a separate creation who can obey God or disobey God. So the, the devil, uh, Satan, is, fr is from... Um, is from the jinn. But as, so the angels, they fulfill the commandments of God. Like the angels bring revelation, the angels will support the believers, the angels will bring the punishment, the angels will take the soul at the time of death, uh, the angels will guard paradise and they will uh, guard the hellfire, etc. So this is the angels. That's the second pillar. Third pillar is the books. So we believe, for example, Moses was given the Torah. We believe David was given the, the Psalms or Zabor. We believe Jesus was given the Injil. We believe in these books as they were sent down. But we believe what the Jews and Christians have today is corrupted. And there, yeah, there's so many reasons why we can show that it's been corrupted. Even, even Christian scholars, biblical scholars, they recognize this. So that's the third thing. We believe in the messengers. So like Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. And we believe that these are the best of mankind and they were chosen to deliver the message to mankind and to, to tell people how to worship God Allah, and how to tell people what's going to happen in the hereafter. So we believe in all the messengers. But the last one, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and no messenger will come after him. Uh, the fifth pillar, the last day, which you, you mentioned about. The last day, it basically it covers everything that happens from the time we die. How the, the angel of death will take our souls, how they take the soul of the believer, how it takes the soul of the disbeliever, how we are placed in our grave. All mankind is asked three questions in their grave. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is the messenger sent to you? So we'll be asked this. Then uh, the day of judgment, what's going to happen on the day of judgment? And it describes the paradise and it describes the hellfire. Still need me for the yes, in the moment, in the moment. But you're, I think you're in there. Yes, no problem. No problem, no problem. So yes, so the hadith mentioned, so paradise, it has gates. I think I made a mistake. I can't remember if it's seven or eight. I'll have to get back to you. Okay, yeah, that's all right. But the paradise, it has gates. And so there's gates of fasting. There's gates of the people who pray. There's gates for the people who give charity. And so some people will enter by different gates. But as he said, the woman who fulfills these three commandments to pray five times a day, to fast in Ramadan and to obey her husband. Obedience here means that she obeys in what is good. Not her husband tells her something which is oppressive or something which is like, for example, if the husband says, you are my wife, you have to drink alcohol. She would never obey him. Yeah. Or he says, you are my wife, you're not allowed to cover your hair. She, she would never obey him. So. The woman who does this, she can enter paradise by whatever gate she wishes. Yeah. Whereas the man, he has to do a lot more work. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Even, for example, the, the, the believers in this life, like the, 
the husband and the wife, they will be together. Yeah. The children will be together. But the, the husband will be more handsome. The wife will be more beautiful. And there will be no, you know, the people in paradise, you know, we're human. We have uh, shortcomings, we have mistakes. You know, like, for, for example, even when you love someone, there's something which it, it, it annoys you or something like this. Yeah, yeah all of this is removed. So it's just peace and tranquility. Because yeah. paradise is the place where, you know, the, the human soul, this is what we desire. That's why people in this life, if they don't understand and they don't uh, understand satisfaction or cont contentment, they can never be happy. Because the soul has been created for the hereafter. And in paradise, a person will be young forever, they never grow old. They'll be healthy forever, they never become sick. They'll be happy forever, they will never become sad and they will live forever and they will never die. If you look at these four things, you can see that people are craving this in this life, but they can't have it. So that's why people become uh, depressed or anxious, etc. So this will all be fulfilled in the hereafter. And obviously there's the opposite for those who, when the truth comes to them and out of arrogance they reject, then the hellfire. Then the last pillar, the sixth pillar, is called the Qadr. Qadr is the decree. We believe that Allah, the all-knowing, the all-wise, whatever happens, He knows. Whether it's good or whether it's bad. The good is, is a test for us. When, when Allah gives us something good, it's are we going to be grateful? When Allah gives us a hardship or difficulty, it's to see if we're patient. And also that, that makes a person a stronger person when they go through difficulties. So we believe that Allah knows everything, Allah created everything, Allah has decreed everything, and we have our own free will, but nothing can happen in the heavens and the earth except by the will of God. Yeah. Nothing, not even the leaf will fall from the tree. So that's the, that's the six pillars of Iman. Oh, thank you so much for asking No problem, no problem. Yeah, thank you. And then just, just while we're on that subject, so six pillars of Iman, five pillars of Islam. Yeah. This is like, you know like you have a tent. Yeah. The, the pillars, they hold up the tent. They're not everything. So these five pillars are not everything, but these are the most important thing in Islam. Because Islam, it, it governs your complete, work, complete life. But the five pillars are the first one, the thing which makes you a Muslim, when you, when you testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. That's the first pillar. Second, a Muslim prays five times a day. And this is something beautiful. It's like you have a, con in our busy lives, five times a day you have a connection with, God, with Allah. Allah told them to pray five times yes, a, a person can pray more. There's, there's other optional prayers, but these five times a day, whether you're working, whether you're traveling, you stop, you take time out and you pray. And it is something which is beneficial for us. Like even the, because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was sent for all mankind, but he was an Arab. So he gave them many examples which they, they could understand. So he asked, once he asked the companions if a person, he has a stream in front of his house and he bathes in that stream five times a day, would any dirt remain on their body? So obviously they all said no. So he said same, when, when a person prays five times a day, their sins are washed off. So by praying five times a day, we get our sins forgiven, we have connection with Allah, you have peace, you have tranquility and you have purpose in life. After that we have zakat. Zakat is, zakat it means to purify and it means to increase. But zakat is the compulsory charity. But this is, for example, if a person has wealth up and above their needs, it's not your, your needs. Like you need food, you need a house, you need transport. You don't pay zakat on this. But a person who has savings for one year, or a person has gold, for example, or this country, we don't have it, but if a person has crops or a person has camels or sheep or cows, etc. The, the crops is on the day of the harvest, you have to give to the poor, 5% or 10%. But the, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but the, on the other wealth is 2.5%. So, for example, if I have a hundred pounds, up, up and above my needs, above the level of zakat, then every year I will give £2.50 to the poor. It doesn't sound much, but if, if all the Muslims they paid their zakat, there would be no poverty in the world. So this is, yeah, so, so yeah, this is zakat. Uh, the fourth pillar, fasting in the month of Ramadan. You know, every year we, we have a, 
obviously we use this calendar daily, you know, January, February, etc. But in Islam, we have our own calendar and, and it's done by the moon. So each month, you know, when you see the, the new moon, the very thin in the sky, this is the first day of the month. As it goes for the full moon, this will be the middle of the month and then it will disappear again. Then a new so the, the month of Ramadan, every Muslim who is fit and able, a sick person, no, every Muslim who is fit and able, they fast, which is avoiding food, drink and marital relationships from the sun up to the sun down. Okay, Allah mentions in Quran, because the beautiful thing about Islam, obviously I'm Muslim, so you can say that I'm biased, but the beautiful thing about, and the reason why I accepted Islam, in Islam you have an answer for everything. And Islam, it really encourages you to ask questions. So Allah mentions in Quran, Surah Baqarah, uh, chapter 2, so you probably read it already. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. It says, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you, like it was prescribed on those before you. So this fasting, this praying, this charity, it's not only the followers, the, the, the nation of Muhammad, peace be upon him, but all the previous prophets used to fast. Jesus would fast, Moses would fast, Abraham would fast. So it's something that we have to do, and it's something which the previous nations have to do. Then Allah mentions at the end of the verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you may gain uh, awareness and you may, the fear of God. What happens is, yeah, obedience to God is, is, is very hard to explain. But in the month of Ramadan, it's a very beautiful time. You know when you have this, this hunger, you, you, feel, you, feel, you feel need for your Creator. You, you recognize your weakness. Uh, you recognize the rights of the poor more and you know what they feel like. And at the same time, the month of Ramadan, because you're not busy with um, food and drink and uh, marital relationships, you, you feel more connected to God. Yeah, so, yeah, so fasting is for this reason. And then also in the month of Ramadan, we have the, it's called the Tarawih prayer or the Qiyam al the night prayer, where I would say 99.9% .9 of all Masajid, the, the whole Quran is read. Uh, yeah, the whole Quran is read in the whole month. But when the Quran is read, it's read by the, it's called the one who leads the prayer is known as the Imam. And he will read the, the whole Quran from memory. Not holding the book, but just from memory. Yeah, Allah mentions in uh, chapter 54, It's also beautiful what you say. It is, it is, yeah. No problem. You, you will, inshallah, you will. God willing, you will. So it mentions we have made the Quran easy to remember. So is there anyone who will remember it? Literally hundreds of thousands of people today have memorized Quran. Even, you know, children from six years old, seven years old. You know, some countries, they're, they're custom like Mauritania and stuff. Their, their custom is they won't send the children to school until they memorize Quran. And the, the Quran, for example, when, the, when the, the leader of the prayer leads the prayer, we're human. Sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes you slip. When he makes a mistake, the people behind him, they correct him like that. And they're not holding the Quran either. Yeah, it's just, just memorized. Because you hear it again and again and again. And like you said, it's beautiful. So, like for example, we have the English translation, French translation, uh, Malay translation. This is never considered Quran. This is only considered translation. The Quran is the speech of Allah sent down in Arabic, preserved and protected in Arabic. And it has a, it has a different meaning. It has, it has, it's more powerful. Like even like when I, when I mentioned to you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order you may get taqwa. It, you know I said it's righteousness, it's God awareness, it's fear of God. It, it's, it's very hard to explain. Whereas taqwa just says everything. So, some of the companions the companions of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him they said taqwa is like a person imagine you have beautiful clothes on and you're walking along a path with uh, you know spikes and uh, from the bushes and how you you know you're you're protecting your, this is taqwa your whole life you have uh, the presence of Allah you have awareness of Allah and you're trying to please him and you're wor you're worried about displeasing him this is taqwa 
So fasting in Ramadan brings about this. It's, it's like a training period. Don't talk about what we like the, the, the relationship you have with God, your clothes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And taqwa is mentioned in the Quran again and again. Like uh, in the beginning of the Quran, it mentions, uh, This is a book in which there is no doubt. It is a guidance for those people who have taqwa. So the one who has taqwa, he will be guided by this book. So, uh, so yeah, so this was fasting in the month of Ramadan. And then the last pillar is known as Hajj. Hajj is the, you know, uh, once in a lifetime, every Muslim who's able, they will perform the pilgrimage. They will go to Mecca, which is uh, amazing. It's amazing because you're there with maybe three million, four million people. And if you see the woman, she can dress as she wishes, but all of the men, whether they're rich, whether they're poor, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're educated, they all wear, you know, two whites. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's like, you know, honey. Yeah. If, if, if you explain honey to a person who's never had it, yeah. you can use words, but until they taste it, yeah, like so that, that's Hajj. So that's the, the five pillars, of Islam. that's the six pillars of Iman and the five pillars of Islam. That's the basics. And as you said, there's so much to, uh, to learn. So, so basically, uh, this is Hamza. Okay. If you're happy, to, he can be your your wakil. You can uh, contact him, or you can contact him through his wife, and then you can discuss if you if you need anything, for example, in your married life. Yeah, so, so what happens is why you need uh, a wali, like you said, a wakil, yeah. is because you need somebody to represent and look out for you, like if, you, if there is any problem. Yeah. yeah. And when he does the marriage, he's going to ask, he's going to ask me some questions on your behalf. Yeah. Like, for example, do you want to get married? Yeah. Kind of stuff. Did you mention the dowry? Yes, but I, I think you two have to discuss. Like, he has to give you a gift. Oh, yeah, yeah and, and it's, it's your choice. Yeah. So the, would the gift come before the marriage or after? The no, it, it, it can be it can be agreed. It has to be agreed at the marriage, but you give it when you're able. Yeah, you can give it when you're able. Yeah. It could be big. It could be small. So if you want to give her a, a gift of let's say a hundred thousand pounds, that's fine. Yeah. I'm in I'm in agreement. With She's there. Like, really? bring yeah. it on. Does it have to be? Could it be like? What it could be as little as a Quran. It could be, it could be a, a Islamic dress, it could be a, a book, okay. it could be a gold, okay. yeah, and it's yours. Okay. It doesn't belong, to, it doesn't belong to anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Could it be like, um, say if it was like, just like one day, like make sure you provide like family and children and stuff, or not like that? No, it has to be something uh, tangible, yeah. Okay. And something which can be, for, like some people, what they'll do is very common, a Muslim will say, uh, I will marry you on the condition you take me Hajj. The problem is, the problem is, it's not something which is a uh, because the person may pass away. Yeah. So it should be. It's, it's better if it's something tangible. Okay. Do you, do you want to go away for a few minutes and discuss? Yeah. And then we'll be back yeah. in two seconds. No problem. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. Don't go away. The come back though. Yeah. 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 Are they reflecting on one thing that they Yeah. They were ready to do so. They were already ready. Yeah. That's I'm just explaining. No, but I've asked them the matter. Okay. They have to discuss. I, it's not nice to discuss in front of us the yeah, matter, no, is no, it? That's yeah. That's yeah. What about, but you, you know what to say, don't you, in terms of yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm bad, but not that bad. Not that bad. <laughs> Are you married? Have you been married before? Yeah. You're yes. married? Alhamdulillah. Well, I think you know what to say then. Kids. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> the man he can take her back. Oh. The man... Yeah. 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 Sure. Right. So if, 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 for example, a man gives his wife a divorce, in the three menstrual cycles, they, she, he has to provide for her and take care of her, and they, can, they live together. The man, he can take her back, either verbally or by a touch in such a way that only a man will do with his wife, that he's taken her back. That can happen once. That can happen twice. But on the third time, he can't take her back, right? Unless there's certain conditions prevalent. So therefore, it's something which shouldn't be, you know, if you have difficulties, sometimes it's best to be quiet, you calm down. I'm sure you're aware and you come back and discuss. Or, for example, you know, 
as Muslims, you know, it's, it's a brotherhood. Innam al mu'minun al-ikhwa. Verily, the believers are brothers. So, it's not something which you do yourself. You, you get to know people, you have a community, and it happens. You, would, you can go and speak to other people, they can give you advice. You can speak to other people, give you advice. People will come between you, and you can, you can sort out problems. So, it's just because, so to understand this is marriage, and this is divorce. Obviously, it's, it's not good. It's not nice to mention at the same time, but we, we need to know. And marriage, so we need to be patient. We need to take it seriously. And the thing is, in Islam, you know, when a, per when a, when a person embraces Islam sincerely, then their previous sins are forgiven. The person is like a newborn baby. So, for example, generally what happens is, this lady is completely forbidden for you. To be with her, to touch her, to be alone with her. And once the marriage takes place, what has made her permissible for you is the name of Allah. Because the name of Allah is mentioned and you've agreed to marry and fulfill the conditions, she is permissible for you. So we have to take it seriously. We're getting married in the name of Allah. And it, uh, uh, the aim of marriage is to live together, to find peace and tranquility. Allah mentions in Quran in chapter 30, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَفَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجٍ لِتَسْكِنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Allah says, from the signs of Allah, how we recognize Allah, is He has created for you your partners. He's created from you your partners. Because our, our father Adam, Hawa or Eve, she was created from him. So the woman has been created, yeah. So the woman's been created from the man. And then Allah mentions, in order that you may find tranquility. You cannot have tranquility in life unless you have a good partner. That's how you have to respect her and care for her. And, and he has placed between you love and mercy. So this is from the signs of Allah, how he's done this. The Prophet Muhammad said, the best of you is the best of you in faith. And the best of you is the one who is best to his wife or his wives. So that's it. Are, are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes. And, and the, the, was a horse? Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, the sister said a horse and the okay. brothers accepted. Okay. okay. So what we do, we, we recite three verses from Quran and then we ask him, does he accept to marry you? And then we ask you, do you accept to marry him? And that's it. Okay. Um, no, there's no need. That's, that's why one of the conditions in Islam, you have two witnesses. It can't be done privately. It's, it's a public thing. But then you can, you can go and tell people. Some people, because of the society we live in, they may go to the registry office and register and everything. You can do that if you want. But this marriage is, in, in the sight of Allah, this is sufficient, yeah. Which is the main thing, the most important thing. So we recite three verses of Quran, and then we ask you, do you accept? And we have two witnesses. So uh, let me just see. Ah, we need a witness, a witness. Yes. You know, sir, I was going to ask, basically, you know that guy that was saying, um, why did he marry a six-year-old? I yeah. was doing research this the other day, yeah. and I don't know if this is the right answer, but is it because, um, to, like, the, the final woman is when she starts menstruating, and yes. she was menstruating, she was a woman? No, the, the marriage was done when she was six. Yeah. The, the marriage wasn't consummated until she was nine, when the menstruation came. Yeah, okay. The, the thing is, in this society, it's difficult for us to understand because of society, but if you imagine the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he came 1,400 years ago, he came with his message and he was opposed by the people, by, the, by, some, by Christians, by Jews, by idol worshippers. No one criticized this marriage. The marriage was considered normal. It was only in the 19th century, 18th century, when uh, Orientalists began to criticize it. Before that, it was accepted. It was accepted in Europe. It was, it was quite a normal practice. And it was something, you have to understand it was a marriage. It's not just a relationship. And her name was Aisha, Rajul Anha. She was, uh, she was one of the greatest scholars in Islam. When the Prophet passed away, she was 18. And she continued to teach. Like if you look, if you look, the, if you look at the books in Islam, 
we have so many narrations from her. And so she was considered a scholar in her own right. She was happy with the marriage. Her father gave her away in marriage. The, her mother was the one who beautified her for her marriage. And it was something accepted in the community. It was, it was something which was considered normal. It's not a must. It's not compulsory, but it's something which is allowed. So we're not saying that every Muslim has to get their daughter married. Because in this time, people are not mentally, they're not ready for this. So it's something which is allowed in suitable time and places, but it's not a must. I mean, even sometimes Christians, they will criticize us. And we ask them simply, can you show us from the Bible the age of marriage? Yeah. And no one can. Yeah, that's why, yeah, because when I was researching it, like yeah. it said, because, like, you know, um, a lot of people get confused. They think a woman is when they turn 18, but yeah, yeah. When a woman is when they start menstruating. This, this is very new. We need to give her a holistic answer to this question as well. There's no absolute certainty on her age. Although the brothers made mention it's yeah. referred to as six and nine, there are some other narratives which could suggest to the contrary. I disagree. I know he disagrees, but there the, the, the narrations are very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Into a discussion about that, but there is con there is evidence to the contrary, which is substantial as well. I mean, uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah, no, 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 now is not the time or place. But it's not Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We, we have we have our discussions amongst us. Um, yeah, there's classes, there's mosques around here, they have classes in English for brothers and for sisters. We'll, we'll direct you, inshallah. Yeah. Also, um, I'll put you in touch with a, a sisters group. It's a sisters only group. That will, um, you'll contact them by Instagram or their, their contact page. And they'll, they'll keep in touch. They'll give you a mentor. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've got one. I just said we've got one. That's fine, so they can help you. So we just need one more witness. Okay. Thank you so much for your help. No problem. So, I, I, no problem. Is he the witness? Yes, he's a witness. Achi, we need a witness. Well, we need a witness. Secondly, are you happy for I mean, should this be recorded, the actual ceremony? Is that, it is, uh, are, you, are you fine with being recorded? They will, they will blur you out. Yeah, yeah. All right, so officially you're the witness. Okay. And he's a witness. I'm the I'm the Wali. Okay. Yeah. One moment. Uh, two minutes. So. I, I will come. Okay. They get married, sir. Okay. 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 So I will recite from the Quran. It mentioned, "Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutun illa wa antum muslimun." It mentioned in the Quran, "O oh, you who believe." Fear Allah as he deserves to be feared. And do not die except in a state of Islam, in a state of submission. Then the second verse, Ya you had nasa to ko rabba kumalladi khalaka kumal min nasim wahida, wa khalaka min hazojaha, wa batha min huma rijal and katherum wa nisa'a, what to kullahu ladi to sa'a luna bihi wal arham, inna la kana alayhu rahiba. It mentions all oh mankind. Let me just get the translation a bit easier because it's a bit longer. So this is uh, chapter four, the first verse. O oh mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it his mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women and fear Allah through whom you ask one another and the wombs in, as in your, your mother and your generations Indeed, Allah is ever over you an observer. Then the last verse in chapter 33 Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanat taqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yaslih lakum a'malakum yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa may yati'ullah wa rasuluhu faqad faza fawzan adheema It mentions, O oh you who believe, speak a word which is straight. Qulu qawlan sadeeda Then Allah will yaslih lakum yaghfir lakum He will rectify, if you speak a word which is straight, Allah will rectify you and forgive your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, then that person has obtained Fawzan Adhima. He's a great success. Success in this life and in the hereafter. Now, one thing, sorry. Your full name? Anton Pierre Blake. So, Anton Pierre Blake. Do you accept to marry your full name? My middle name is Bo. Yes. Promise Lisa Aliyah Collins. Again? Promise Lisa Aliyah Collins. Promise Lisa Aliyah Collins. You accept to marry her on the Meher 
of a horse. Yes. And sister, do you accept to marry, remind me again, sorry, the name? Anton Pierre Blake. Anton Pierre Blake. So sister, your name again, sorry? Promise Lisa Aliyah Collins. Promise Lisa Aliyah Collins. Do you accept to marry Anton Blake with the mehu of a horse? Yes. That's it. Your marriage is done. No problem. And then the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he taught the door, Allahumma barak alayk. You know, may Allah have mercy upon, uh, blessings upon you. Allahumma barak alayk. I will come back to you, inshallah. Thank you, your right hand. And say bismillah. What would you. Alhamdulillah. I will, inshallah. Sweet to the mackerels. So now, basically, it's, it's, it's a journey. We, it, this is not the end. This is a journey in, you know, marriage, learning the rights of each other, getting along, learning Islam together. Inshallah. In, inshallah, if I take your details, then we'll, we'll give you some, you know, like books on Islam. We'll direct you to some uh, websites. And as we said, we'll, we'll get you to meet other sisters, inshallah. Two young guys. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, it's our pleasure. Alhamdulillah, we're, we're very happy, Alhamdulillah. How long have you been? How long have you been? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, me, I, I became Muslim uh, a long time ago, 1993. Oh, really? Yeah, when I was about 19. So. Did you come from a Muslim family? No, no, no. Uh, I, I was born in Manchester, okay. brought up in Reading, and in Reading I became Muslim. Then I, my, my wife is Somali, she lives in Stratford, so I married her, I took her back to Reading, she wasn't very happy because her mom, her auntie, her sisters were all here and I think East London is very easy to be a Muslim, so we moved back here, so yeah, so alhamdulillah. Are your parents I'm sorry. No, uh, my mom, we were brought up as Church of England, but you know English culture, English, my mom said you can choose whatever you want. So when I became Muslim, she was very surprised and she thought that it was just a phase. But now, alhamdulillah, I still have good relationships with my mom. She comes all the time. She's happy. No problem. She's happy with the grandchildren, happy with my wife. You grow that, you know. Let me see. Do you want to give me your number? Or do you want to type it in? Let me just move this. Thank you so much. Yeah, call, call, yeah. Yeah, I have a lot to learn. But inshallah, we'll give you books on how to pray, how to wash yourself, how to be a husband, how to be a wife. No problem. Sorry? Oh, it's very simple. There's, there's a long way to do it and a short way. Oh, this is, this is when there's no water. When you need to pray, you need to purify yourself. And there's no water or you become sick, then we use the earth. But now, as, as a new Muslim, then you take a full bath. You, basically, the full bath, you, you wash your mouth, you wash your nose, and then you cover the whole body. Yes, yeah, that's it. There, there's more, but that's a simple way. So, when a person, for, for example, when a person becomes Muslim, when a person has, um, if they have any kind of sexual relationships, uh, when the woman finishes her menses, when the woman finishes her menses, or for example, postnatal bleeding after pregnancy, then the person has to take the full bath. And the full bath, it just consists of the mouth, the nose, and then the full body. And then the person is clean. So you do that after you embrace Islam. And then slowly, slowly, you learn. Inshallah. No problem, no problem. But I, I will contact you and I will, I will give you some books, inshallah. And then... Is there anything else you need and then... Sorry? Oh, you, you have them with you? 
Okay. No problem, no problem. Thank you so much. No problem, sister. Alhamdulillah. We're so happy for you. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. I think they're coming back, so.